Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about what to do when you get several bids that are out of whack. You've sent the drawings over to three subcontractors, and the numbers come back with a wide variation. One of the bids is quite low and seems attractive. The other two are from subcontractors that you know better. But the numbers are much higher. What do you do? Do you take the low bid? You go back to your tried and true subcontractors and ask them if they can do better. The answer is no. That's the best they can do. You're left scratching your head wondering why such a large variation. Contractors have a lot of experience with negotiations and they experience being played against each other on a daily basis. As a result, they tend to become less transparent in their bidding process in order to maintain their negotiating leverage. But that lack of transparency actually hurts the negotiation because you can't tell why they bid what they did. You can't tell whether they misunderstood the scope of work or whether they're greedy and uncompetitive or whether there's a structural problem that's causing the bid to be out of whack. We had a situation with an electrical contract and all of the bids came in much higher than we expected. The numbers were really out of whack. The numbers were double what we'd expected. They were all consistently high, all three of them. Only when we brought in another subcontractor who knew and understood our architect's drawings did we get a bid that made sense. So in that instance, the scope of work was not well understood. The contractors had misunderstood that the allowance for fixtures was not to be added on top of the specific fixtures that had been specified in the design. There was an absolute double count on the cost of materials. But unless the contractors are willing to be transparent, you have no way of knowing why they bid what they did. It would be too easy to point the finger at the contractors and say these guys are way too expensive. Sometimes, it's simply the way things are specified in the drawings and specified by your architect. In another instance, an engineer had specified items that were not what we asked for. They specified surface-mounted transformers, which would require multiple levels of conduit buried in the ground at our expense. Instead, we requested they change the design to incorporate pole-mounted transformers from the electric utility and the final service from the transformers to the buildings would be buried underground, resulting in a much shorter cable length and much less conduit in the ground. The bids from the contractors were high, but it's because the specifications from the engineer were forcing much higher costs than were necessary in the project. In one case, we had a tile contractor who was bidding nearly $15 per square foot for floor tile. The raw materials was no more than $3 per square foot, so the contractor was charging 12 bucks a square foot for the installation. When we queried them and asked them if they could do better, we got almost no relief on the price. A little bit of due diligence found that tile contractors were incredibly busy in the market. Could it be that this was the new normal, the new going rate in the market? We were expecting installation costs something in the range of $3.50 to $4 a square foot and a total cost of between five to six dollars a square foot. But in a purely random conversation, we happened to stumble upon a tile contractor who spoke about a particular job. Turns out it was our job and we'd never spoken to this individual before. The contractor we had engaged was so busy they hired another tile contractor who in turn hired someone else. There were several layers of profit margin between us and the work to be done. Needless to say, we didn't engage with the original contractor. So how do you manage to get competitive bids that you have confidence in? You focus on developing relationships of trust with a small number of subcontractors who you commit to give regular business. You commit to treat them fairly if they commit to treat you fairly. Once that relationship of trust exists, you can create the transparency that's necessary to uncover problems in a bid. It starts with a conversation with the contractor whereby you let them know that transparency is required to do business with you. It's not to squeeze them harder, it's to make sure that there aren't misunderstandings in the scope of work because that's often where problems exist. Hiring a contractor isn't just a matter of getting the lowest price. It's a matter of getting the job done reliably and with a quality that is at your level with an acceptable price. As you think about that, focus on getting transparency with your contractors. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.